Morpheus, is that you? What are you doing in Dragalia Lost, man? What happened to Matrix 4? And why is there a Russian lolly with you? And is she a mailman? I, I don't even know what's going on. But she's cute, so it's okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's me. It's Pony HD. Welcome back to some more Jagali Lost content. Uh, this banner is wild. Like, oh my goodness. This is one of the craziest banners I think we've had. And I actually have the most to say about this banner than I think I've had to say about any banner in a really, really long time. So, uh, before I get started, there's a couple things I do want to say. You know, the giveaway ended recently. I do want to thank everyone who did participate in that giveaway. You know, it was a free $10 giveaway. Uh, also, I'm wearing a Mario Kart shirt right now. You probably can't really see it too well. I don't, know if you, I don't even know if you can see it, even though I showed it. But yeah, so Mario Kart t-shirt. Uh, I actually did not expect to do face cam today. I wasn't going to do face cam, but then I came here to record and I was like, hey, I want to do face cam. So <laughs> I'm doing face cam and uh, I'm wearing a Mario Kart shirt. Like I said, I didn't even prepare. Like I wasn't, I didn't wear this Mario shirt on purpose. I'm just wearing the Mario shirt and then I happen to be recording face cam now. So yeah, uh, that's there. I still didn't make a border for the face cam though. So that kind of sucks. Also, let me know if you like face cam again. I do say this every single time I record a face cam video because honestly, I'm not sure whether I should keep doing face cam or what. Because the way I see it is if you like the face cam, you know, you'll watch the video, you'll see the face cam, you'll be like, hey, Trip, that's Trip over there. No, am I this way? This way? Wherever I am in the top corner, he's over there. You know? <laughs> He's over there. I like his face. I look at his face. But if you don't like face cam, you can kind of just tab out and just listen to me. So again, if you don't like the face cam for this video, just tab out. But please let me know in the comment section down below whether you do like the face cam or don't like it. So for future videos, I can either include the face cam or not include the face cam. So that's all the things I want to say before I actually, um, you know, get into the news. Uh, now then, I think it's about time we hop into the news. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't really remember. So uh, we're going to not say it. Uh, basically... <laughs> There's a new banner. There's also a Raid Event Revival. Skyborn Spectacle is coming back. Uh, I don't really like all these reruns. It kind of does suck, but, you know, I'm not going to really discuss this too much. I just want to say that it's it's around the corner, and that's why we have a win banner. You know, I did predict the win banner to be coming up after this, you know, for Water Mercto Gauntlet. So, uh, here it is. The win banner is coming. You get Su Fang for free, and you get Penglai, which is a dragon that inflicts bog. So, uh, you know, pretty pretty decent. Uh, well, Su Fang's not really that great, but, you know, actually, neither of them are that great. But, you know, they're, they're free units. <laughs> they're free. So, this video, what I'm going to do is discuss the adventure Victor, aka Morpheus, and then the uh, I'm going to discuss the Russian Wally a little bit and the Dragon a little bit. Mostly Victor, though. That's where the, most of the discussion on this video will be, with Victor. So I do want this to be, like I said, a discussion type of video. I don't really just want this to be a should you summon. I will mention if you should summon or not, and I'll let you know my thoughts. But And also mention if I'm going to summon or not, um, because you know I feel like it's good not only to give you advice, but to also tell you what I am going to be doing, so you can take that into your advice as well. So I'll be discussing all that in today's video. Like I said, I do want this to be a discussion type video. I want to hear what your thoughts are on this unit. So please, in the comment section down below, as well as you letting me know if you like face cam or not, let me know your thoughts on these units. Because I do like discussion videos on Dragalia Lost. I actually watch a lot of them myself. So I, you know, I would love to have discussion on this video. That's you know, that's the main thing. I really want to have discussion on this video. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to say. Uh, before I start, so yeah, so like I said, I'm going to discuss Victor against Addis, and I'm just going to call him Morpheus for the rest of this video. So Addis, of course, this is taken straight from the Dragalia Lost Gamepedia, so if you want to have this page up yourself, you can look at it over there, but I will have it up right here. This is Addis, uh, we'll just make him Rarity 5, because why not? So yeah, the Addis is here, and then uh, Victor is here, so I'm going to discuss those two and see who is actually better and whether you should summon or not. Now, this showcase will last from the August 30th at 11 p.m., which is, of course, Pacific time, to the uh september 11th <laughs> at 10 59 p.m so it's gonna last about 12 days i believe so it's like 11 days 12 days something like that so it's gonna last a couple days and i believe the raid event is the exact same duration right um it starts here how long does it last it doesn't say how long it lasts over here but i believe it's pretty much the same amount of time so maybe like a day shorter or something but pretty much the same amount of time and we should be getting a next banner after that we're gonna have no idea what the next banner will be they might start the anniversary then because we do not at the end of September, we should have a Gala banner. So you should keep that in mind if you're going to summon on this banner or not. That there is the anniversary right around the corner. The Gala is might coincide with the anniversary. We might get two different banners for that, or they might just be you know fused into one banner. We really have no idea unless a What's Ahead for Dragali Loss pops out, or a uh, Dragali Digest or something, or they just fill us in or something. They really need to give us some news on what's going to go down for the anniversary. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Also, I just remembered, I wanted to mention there's a light right above my head and it's like the light of heaven but it's actually just the right the light in my room but yeah okay so <laughs> so you do need to remember that the anniversary and the gala are right around the corner if you do want to summon on the showcase so for an average to pull an adventure at 0.5 percent rate up 
it's going to take you 15,000 Wormite. That's the average. That will give you a 50% chance at pulling the rate up unit. Now, of course, dragons are, it's going to be a little bit lower. I believe it's around 12K Wormite now since they got boosted up to 0.8%. I believe it's around there, but like I said, that's just the average values. It can take you, you know, one summon or it can take you a thousand summons. It's a gotcha. You know, it, you can't really predict the gotcha. So uh, if you do want to summon on this, I do recommend you wait until the last few days once we get news on the next banner or the next, you know, recent events or something that's going to be showing up. So I do recommend if you do want to summon, unless, you know, this is your wife or was Bondo and you really want to summon, that you wait until the last couple of days before you do summon. Now, uh, should you summon on this banner, I do think you should if you have not cleared water mercurial gauntlet uh high mercury or you know just mainly water mercurial gauntlet that's the main thing that this banner is for i feel like also uh there's a couple other things i do want to mention but yeah and, and am i gonna summon i'll say that at the end of the video whether i will summon or not but that's kind of my thoughts and then the rest of this video i'm going to discuss why i believe you should summon if you haven't cleared water mercurial gauntlet and you need have, you need to have enough wormite saved up for the anniversary if you don't do not summon that's my like do not go under 8000 wormites for the anniversary i believe if you have 8000 wormite you could stack up to 20k by the time the anniversary shows around so if you have 8000 wormite i would not summon and if you do decide to summon save at least 8000 wormite so you can get up to around 20k by the time the anniversary shows up so that's that's my uh that's my little per se thing on the if you should summon or not so without further ado let's actually hop into the discussion so first of all victor aka morpheus morpheus is a support unit compared to Addis, who's an attacking unit. Now it says right here, class attack unit. Uh, it might be cut out, but attacking unit. Uh, Addis's max strength is 509, while his strength is 494. So Addis has 15 higher strength. Now granted, 15 is not really that much. It's not going to make a big difference. So it's not really too big of a thing. You also need to remember that Victor is a support unit, not an attack unit. So that kind of shows that Addis is going to be more offensive than Victor. But Victor's kit is very, very interesting. I say Victor Lux, his, his name is right there. I'm just going to call him Morpheus from now on. So, of course, he's a Windblade, meaning his competition will be Addis, Melody, and Musashi. I believe those are the only three Windblades. So, first of all, Musashi, I do think he will be better than Musashi. Um, you know, he, he will talk about his kit, but I do think he'll be better than Musashi. Is he going to be better than Melody? Honestly, Melody's good based on her teammates, not really herself. So, I don't think it's fair to compare him to Melody because I. I don't know who's going to be better in the long run, but, you know, Melody's, if her teammates are good, she's good. So that's kind of how Melody works in. So it's basically him versus Addis, and that's what this video is kind of discussing. Also, I do, if you want to see, like, an actual review on these units once they're released and we have the SP cost and everything, I can do that. Just let me know in the comments down below. So, yeah, let's discuss this kid now. So Morpheus is skill one, a steel formation. Deals wind damage to the target and nearby enemies, inflicts bleeding, and activates skill shift if the attack connects. Phase 2 adds an additional 3% increase to the entire team's water resistance for 20 seconds, while Phase 3 also grants all teammates a 1U shield that nullifies damage less than 20% of the user's maximum HP. This does not stack with any other shields. Uh, and, and let's talk about his uh, skill 2 right now as well. Actually, no, let's talk about skill 1. Okay, so skill 1. Deals wind damage to target nearby enemies, inflicts bleeding. Inflicts bleeding is huge. Now, it's just like a little, it's two words. It's just two words, but those two words make such a big difference. It is insane. Inflicts bleeding. If you don't know what bleeding is, bleed is the strongest mechanic in the game. The strongest, it's not an affliction, but it's like a, a debuff, I guess. The strongest debuff in the game. No boss is resistant to bleeding. And bleeding is so strong. You can stack up to three bleeds on the enemy. Each bleed lasts for 30 seconds. The more bleeds you have, the more damage it will do. It's basically another skill without having to waste time to do another skill or charge SP or anything, if you can get it off. Now, I say if you can get it off, because usually for adventures that have bleed, it's only an 80% chance to inflict bleed. Of course, Marshatin is a dragon. That's 100% chance. But like I said, that's a dragon. That's different. So it's an 80% chance to inflict bleed. Usually, we don't know what his chance to inflict bleed is. If it's 100%, that will be very, very easy, obviously, to inflict bleed if it happens every single time. Uh, you know, Addis is super strong, but he doesn't inflict bleed every time. You know, for Water Mercurial Gauntlet, you're going to have to reset if you don't get some bleeds or whatever. So that is something to note. Um, his phase two and phase three for this skill don't really add much to it. It's just a little bit of defense things. Those could be good for astral raids, though. Don't get me wrong. They could be good for astral raids, but it is a DPS meta, and that's not going to help with DPS at all. It's an increase of the team's water resistance, and then phase three is a shield. So for um i guess for mercurial gauntlet it's not really gonna help at all but for astro raids but it could help like i said he has a little bit more utility than addis in that sense let's compare him to addis's skill one addis's skill one bamboo cutter three hits and one delayed 260 percent wood damage and inflicts poison but if you have his skill two up 
and inflict bleeding, which is, you know, on the bottom part. So bleeding, of course, 80% chance uh, with 132% damage every five seconds for 30 seconds. So Anis' skill one compared to his skill one, of course, we don't have the SP cost and the modifiers out <clears throat> for Morpheus yet. So we don't really know what those SP costs and what the skill damage and all that stuff is going to be and the bleed percentage and all that stuff. So we don't, we can't make an accurate assessment, but we can say that his skill one will be good at the very least it's going to be good unless it has a crazy high sp cost which it could because remember it's a skill shift skill and it inflicts bleeding that's a lot of effects over there so it could have a high sp cost but it is his skill one so it should be around 3k now for blades of course they gain 1500 sp per combo or per chain you know for per five hit chain so as long as it's 3000 or under he will be easily usable if not you're gonna have to use skill haste to bring it down to 3000 so you can get it off in two hits or in two uh you know two chains uh so it's skill one is gonna be good but we don't know how good yet skill two lethal stratagem deals one amps to the target and nearby enemies and grants all teammates immunity to knockback for 15 seconds the main thing is just damage immunity to knockback again it's a defensive sort of um uh, addition onto the skill just like a skill one it really doesn't help much because it adds nothing to dps you shouldn't be getting hit in micro gauntlet anyways so uh, that part doesn't really help but it's an attacking skill compared to addis's uh, buffing skill now the thing is addis's buffing skill is 25 percent strength which is really really high and it in you know allows his skill one to inflict bleeding which is where most of his dps comes from the thing with addis that makes him so good is that Per one use of this skill two, he can use his skill one twice. That's the reason Addis is very, very good. And by the time you use that skill one twice, when you charge up for the third time, his skill two is going to be charged up, and then you just do it all again. So, of course, the main thing is you need to get that bleed off. It's only 80% chance, but that's the reason Addis is so good. We don't know how the SP costs are going to work for these two skills. Now, of course, these are two offensive skills. He's going to inflict bleeding every time with his skill one. He doesn't even have skill two active for that, so... That is a thing that you need to remember. Uh, Addis to inflict bleeding and to have his maximum potential DPS, he needs that skill two off so that he can inflict bleeding. The AI, the AI is terrible with Addis. The AI, the AI has no idea how to use Addis properly at all. So you do have to control Addis. Whereas, you know, for Morpheus's AI, you don't have to control him. There's a lot of differences between these two. We don't really know who's going to be better until, you know, Morpheus is released. But once he's released, we can make an accurate assessment. However, I don't feel like he's going to be as strong in terms of skills. Uh, he might be though, he could be if they have high, you know, low SP costs and high DPS, you know, high modifiers, he could be, but we won't know until he's actually released and all the information is out. Because of course, Addis is skill one, it does inflict poison when bleed is not up, so that is a nice thing, but of course, poison is nowhere near as strong as bleed. I do just want to mention that, so we won't know. And of course, it is two offensive attacking skills, which is something to note with the wind skill damage that we do get in this banner. Those are going to be buffed up even higher and be even better. So that is something I do want to note. Again, let me know what you think. We won't know until he's released and to actually say how good he is. That's pretty much all I have to say about the skills. His co-ability, strength plus 10%, just like Addis. His abilities, HP 70% equals strength plus 13%, bog res 100%, and buff time 30%. Now, buff time is good for asteroids, like I said, but overall, that really doesn't really help him in DPS at all. Usually, you know, units love buff time, but this buff time really does not help at all. Huh? <laughs> it doesn't help much. Uh, and then bog res is good for high mercury, but again, you don't need bog res for high mercury at all. Addis is freeze res, so they're different content technically, but HP 7% equals, 30, uh, equals strength plus 13%, though. That is really, really strong. Now, you might say it's just 13% extra strength. It's not too much, but with the wind skill damage that we do have in this banner, um, that improves the skill damage even higher. Because again, you don't want to stack a bunch of skill damage onto uh, when you already have skill damage, because it's not going to, it's not going to, um, like, like, you know how, I don't know how to explain it. Like the bar, not the bar, the line, if when you stack up skill damage goes up high at first and then it kind of like evens out and then goes like like that. I don't know if that makes sense. So if you have up, up to a certain point when you have too much skill damage, you don't gain as much from it. So having this ability is gonna allow that to go up a little bit differently. I don't know if I'm explaining it well at all. I'm probably not. But basically, this is gonna make all his skill damage modifiers already apply and then it's going to increase it by 13 percent which is really really powerful that's basically what i'm trying to say this is a really really powerful ability and it's very very strong again he does inflict bleeding it's going to up everything like that's time uh not time um dps and that makes him really really good now compare him to addis's abilities uh you know addis's abilities 
Bleeding Punisher, Freeze Res, and Broken Punisher. Now, Addis has Broken Punisher 20% and Bleeding Punisher 8%. Bleeding Punisher is very, very good because, again, when you bleed, uh, it's going to automatically add on to your Bleeding Punisher, which is going to do a lot of DPS, and that's 8%. And you should have the enemy bleeding pretty much constantly throughout the battle uh, once your skill 2 is ready. So uh, you should have him bleeding very, very often. You know, Mercurial Gauntlet, after 15 seconds, you should have him bleeding pretty much for the rest of the fight. So you should have it pretty much 99% of the fight, or not 99, but like, you know, 90% of the fight, you should have it on. And it's going to be very, very strong if you can get it off, which you should get it off. Then next up is Broken Punisher, uh, which is good, but it's it's not that good, if that makes sense. It's okay. It's not an amazing because it's only for like, what, 10 seconds, 5 to 10 seconds throughout the fight, however long they're broken for. So it's not amazing, but it does add to DPS some. So, uh, you know, Morpheus does have a little bit better abilities, and, you know, especially for skill damage dragons, a little better. However, it's really not going to make too big of a difference unless, you know, his, his skill damage dragons, you know, it makes the stack up really, really high. You also have to mention that Addis is also getting access to these skill damage dragons now. So Addis is going to be even better than he was before. Also, I just got a text. Let me just make sure it's nothing important. Okay, nothing important. <laughs> So it's gonna we're between abilities who really wins I don't really know until we see them in action and we can see all the modifiers and everything I don't really know but I do think Morpheus edges out at us just a little bit when it comes to abilities However, uh, broken Punisher like I said, it's not amazing because it's so little but if you have your skills ready during break It's gonna be very very strong. So there's a lot of uses to it. So all in all what do I think about Morpheus? I think he's going to be a great unit. Do I think he's going to be better than Addis? No, I don't think he's going to be better than Addis. Addis is just so strong. Unless they make his SP costs very low and his modifiers high, which they look pretty high to, to me in the video, we don't really think he's going to be better. You know, I say we. I don't really think he's going to be better than Addis. So that's kind of the main thing I want to say with Victor. He's very strong, but he probably won't be stronger than Addis. You also have to mention Addis is a four star. It's going to be so much easier to get once his banner comes around. Of course, he's limited, but he's going to be so much easier to pull than Morpheus, which technically you could pull at any time if you pull him in the future because he's going to be in the permanent pool. But I just, I do just want to mention that. So all in all, let me know your thoughts between these two, Addis and uh, Victor, aka Morpheus. So overall, I think Addis will probably be better, but we won't know until you know he's actually released. Next up, Veyu. I'm not going to talk about these next two units much. Uh, Veyu is going to be the best Wind Dragon in the game. I personally don't like his design. I was going to pull if they added a Wind skill damage but Dragon, but I wanted a Waifu, man. <laughs> this is not a Waifu. Uh, you know, I personally, I do like how they're adding Dragons that are actually Dragons, but I just, I wanted a Waifu. <laughs> I wanted like a Cerberus with skill damage or something, but oh well. Uh, it is what it is. Overall, he's pretty much Konoha Nasakya, but for Wind, so... Um, you know, he's he's gonna be great. He's probably gonna be the best wind wind dragon. You do have to mention though that his uh, his design is just like Agni's, and Agni is not not you know when you shapeshift into Agni, he's not the best in DPS. So you're probably not gonna want to shapeshift into Veyu, but he will be good just to put on your unit and then you know use your unit. So he's gonna be the best wind dra wind damage dragon at all. You know, wind strength dragon in the game. And yeah, that's pretty much, if you want to pull for him, it's going to be great to pull for him. He's going to be the best wind, wind dragon in the game. That's really all I have to say about him. Uh, so like I said, he's, we're probably going to get a really good blade unit with Victor and then the best wind dragon in the game with Veyu. And then we have a cute waifu with Noelle. So Noelle is going to be on the screen right now. Uh, we don't really have information about her besides what's shown in this video, uh, but she is a staff. Uh, wind staff. So her competition is Maribel, and Maribel is very, very good as we know. However, Maribel needs to get needs to proc her defense down to be good, and that's a percent based chance to proc that defense down. So she's not going to be good at all times. We have to, you know, you have to get a little bit lucky to get Maribel to her full potential. Whereas her, she actually has a buff in her skill one, which is 25% strength buff to all wind teammates, which is actually very solid. As you saw earlier, Addis's buff was 25% to himself. Right, so this is 25% to the entire team. Now, if this is only 10 seconds, that will kind of suck a little bit, but it's still going to be a great skill. Uh, however, if it's 15 seconds or more, she will be amazing. Uh, the only downside I can see to her buffing is that Galeo will probably be better, <laughs> which sucks. Galeo is so good. If you have a Shinobi Galeo, she's just she's ridiculously good. So I don't know if she's going to be better than Galeo, even off element Galeo. Um, I think you'll probably just want to slot Galeo in on your team instead of Noel. But she's so cute. I love her design so much. And I might actually pull just for her. Like I said, I was going to let you know if I'm going to pull or not. I might pull just for her. She's a four star. She shouldn't be too hard to get. So I might pull just for her. 
Lover Design, your skill two goes off pretty quickly, and it's an offensive damaging skill. Of course, we don't know the SP calls or the modifiers on that, so I can't really say too much about that, but her skill one is only to win units, and um, it's if it lasts for a long time, she's going to be very, very good. Probably better than Maribel, actually, because like I said, Maribel is luck-based, whereas Noelle is, will not be luck-based. So that is something to know. We'll have to wait till she's released and actually get a full assessment on there, but I really do like design. I love her. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Now, should you summon on this banner... My opinion is you should summon. If you're going to summon, you should summon for either Veyu or Noel. You shouldn't aim for Victor. He's going to be hard to get. I'm also surprised we only have two raid-ups this time. Uh, I think this is the first time in a while we only had two raid-ups. So pretty interesting. But yeah, so they're probably going to have somebody else on raid-up. That's a win unit. Like maybe Lin Yu is going to be on later raid-up or something. But uh, yeah, so Veyu, if you're going to summon, summon for Veyu. Don't aim for Victor. Uh, aim for Veyu. Uh, or Noel, of course. So that's kind of my thoughts on this. Am I going to summon? Like I said, I might summon for Noel. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this style of video, everything like that. You know, I appreciate all you guys' support. It really does mean a lot to me. And yeah, that's pretty much everything. Have a great day. And until next time, have a nice trip.